So good morning again. Welcome. Um, man, I got to be honest, I'm so blessed and, and humbled to, to be able to be here this morning and, and bring God's Word. Um, it is a, a, a pretty heavy message this morning, so we're going to dive right in. Um, but real quick, I just want to say, hey, thank you, Pastor Mike, for allowing me this opportunity. Um, they're not here this morning. Uh, they have uh, some uh, family issues they're dealing with, so just keep them in their thoughts and prayers um, this morning, if you would. Um, on December 23rd, 1776, one of our founding fathers, Thomas Paine, said these words. He said, these are the times that try men's souls. Now, he said that 240 years ago, but it's applicable today. If you look at what's going on in our world at this current moment, that's very applicable. We are living in very turbulent and very painful times. The enemy has been on the move lately and made some bold moves. <clears throat> I know at times I'm feeling, I'm struggling and I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm not sure which way to turn. I know we're feeling attacked from every direction. You feel like you just can't get ahead. You feel like we're being pulled away from our family values. We're fighting brother against brother. We're asked to abandon some of our Christian values at the sake of not offending others. We're feeling more hollow, emptier, and lonelier than ever. Asking ourselves, what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? Well, some of us, we go to church every Sunday. We read our Bibles. We pray. We pray for each other. Some of us just try to get through this storm and make the best of it. <clears throat> but there are some that feel like they've lost hope. They feel like just giving up. Like they're resigned to a life filled with despair and discouragement seems like nothing's ever going to go their way. Every time we think we see the light at the end of that tunnel, someone comes and drops a load of fill in the blank and we smother. But I am here to share with you this morning that there is hope. There is hope in a God who restores. There's hope in a God that will rise up and meet us and the challenges we face. But it's going to require something from us. It's going to require that we fight, that we are willing to take that enemy on head on. So how are we going to draw those battle lines? How did the great warriors of the Old Testament, how did they do it? We know Joshua was told by God to have courage. Don't be afraid. But what about David? What did David do? Well, we're going to look at that this morning. We're going to open our Bibles to Psalm 35, if you would. Um, if you're kind of new to the Bible... Psalms is right after Job, right before Proverbs. Um, and I can show you a little trick. If you hold your Bible this way and open it about just a little less than halfway, it'll open to Psalms. And then you can go ahead and just thumb over to Psalm 35. And we're going to go ahead and start at verse 1. 
Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. And say to my soul, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them, since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me. May ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in His salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, O Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. You see, David cried out there in distress to the one person he knew he could count on. God. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Contend means to struggle, compete, resist, or oppose. The Hebrew word is raub. To contend with. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Now if we look at David, we see David was a king. David commanded vast armies. But he didn't call his generals, did he? He didn't summon them to the palace and say, hey, i got some issues. we got to take care of these people. No. He called on God. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and buckler. He's talking about total protection here. See, in those days, when you went to battle, you carried two shields. You had a full-size shield that would protect you from incoming arrows and such. But you also had a small, what they call buckler, that you wore on your left arm for the closer combat, for the hand-to-hand. Take up shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Then brandish a spear and a javelin against those who pursue me. Let's not talk to them. Let's not give them a tongue lashing or put them in time out. We're talking mortal combat here. But who was this enemy that David was so paranoid about? Now we know during this time period, we know Saul was after David, wasn't he? Saul was coming after David looking to kill him. But the fact that he didn't also call his army could be that David was actually talking about an enemy, an unseen enemy. Maybe something like we call a hurt, habit, or hang-up. At the opening of this chapter, we see that David is doing one of the things he does extremely well. He's calling out to God. He's praying to God. He's getting God involved. He's begging Him to come to His aid and then mortally defeat those enemies. In verse 1 and 2, David, um, when he prays, he begins with admitting to God that, hey, I am powerless. I can't do this. He admits he's powerless to save himself from those who are chasing him, trying to trap him or even kill him. And then he asks God for his help. Point one, we must admit we are powerless over our hurts, habits, 
and hang-ups. You see, David realized, one, that he had to admit there was a problem. There's an enemy coming, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Number two, he had to admit that I can't do it by myself. I can't. So three, he had to realize that he had to turn to the one person he knew could help him. He had to ask God for help. Have you ever felt like David? You ever been pinned down or trapped? Stuck, maybe you're unable to move or make that decision you need to make? We keep thinking things are going to get better. We do the same thing over and over and over with the same outcome. No matter how many times we try, it's just not going to work. You see, David's talking about those very kinds of things. He's asking God to let those who seek to end his life be disgraced. Let him be put to shame. Those who plot ruin, turn them back in dismay. I don't need them here. He wants them to be like chaff, like the husk on the wheat or the corn. He wants it blown away. He's asking God, blow them away. Kind of like Dirty Harry. And then he goes so far as to ask him to make the path dark and slippery and have an angel of the Lord pursue them. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly don't want to run in the dark on a slippery surface being chased by an angel with a spear and a javelin. Not my idea of a good time. Then David tells God that the enemy hid their nets and they dug a pit I couldn't see. They're not coming in bold and mightily. They're coming in quietly and reserved. Stealth. They want to surprise me. You know, so many of us wake up every morning to a hurt for maybe a past abuse. Maybe it's a failed relationship or some other personal tragedy. Whatever it is, it's a weight we carry around with us all the time, isn't it? The hurt seeps into everything that we do and everything that we say. We begin snapping at people. Often we'll, draw, we'll drive a wedge between ourselves and the ones we love. Because we don't want to contend with their pain we don't want to see the disappointment in their eyes. And when it gets so bad, that's when we reach for something to numb that pain. Now maybe for you it's food. Maybe it's alcohol or drugs. Teens. Maybe it's that razor blade that you're using to hurt yourself with. Maybe because of our insecurity, it's multiple partners you're running to. Maybe it's the internet where we're looking for those vast array of images that are so easy to find. No matter what it is, none of that seems to take away that pain for very long, does it? That pain stays with us no matter how hard we try to escape it. We can't seem to escape that pain, escape the defeat or the discouragement, can we? We feel powerless to change anything. We say to ourselves, nothing has worked in the past, so why would it now? It's like I'm drowning in quicksand, and the more I struggle, the more I go down. Until I get to a certain point 
I just can't move anymore. And I think I'm done. But maybe you're one of those who, by miracle or some sheer will, have walked through a season. You've been okay. But then all of a sudden something happens. Bam! There it is again. That ugly habit or hurt rises, raises its ugly head. And you're right back where you started. Trapped again. You see, in this chapter, David asked God to fight for him, to protect him, and to keep him safe. Now, we know the enemy, they don't want that for us. They don't want us to be safe. They want to keep us down. They want us to feel powerless and defeated. In Romans 7.18, it says, For I know what good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Seems like lately, you see all these six and eight week programs for weight loss or stamina building or whatever. that cost hundreds of dollars. But I'm here to share with you today that we have a program of stamina and health and life-changing results right here at River's Edge, and it's free. It's called Celebrate Recovery. And Celebrate Recovery is all about getting you over your hurts, your habits, and your hang-ups. See, because we all know that our enemies come from every direction, and they all come in different forms, don't they? For every person here, there is something that's hurting you. There's something that you just can't put aside. But again, there's hope. You see, the amazing thing about doing Celebrate Recovery, about being in that type of community, is that what trips me up probably isn't going to trip you up. And in that type of community, we can come together. And you can walk beside me. I can walk beside you. We can pray for each other. We can hold each other up. We can even become accountability partners. Point two, when you're going through your hurts, we don't have to do it alone. And that's very important. If you remember, when Jesus sent the disciples out, He didn't send them out alone, did He? He sent them out in pairs. Why? Because one, where two or three or more are gathered in My name, I am there also. And second, when there's two, there's accountability. We're going to keep each other on the mission. And what, what might be a weakness for me is probably not going to be for you. You know, Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. Am I right? So with two of us, we're going to stay sharp and we're going to stay strong. Christ tells us that He is the vine and we are the branches. Without Him, we're powerless. But with Him, we can do anything. All things are possible. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, Just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. You see, we're designed to be part of a community. We're designed to be able to lean on one another, to draw strength from one another, to trust one another. When the going gets tough, we need to be there for each other. Think about it this way. In the Old West, what happened when the, when, the, when the wagon trains were under attack? You always hear, circle the wagons, right? 
They circled the wagons because they would, be a pro they would provide a place of safety and refuge. A place to regroup. A place to restore. So hopefully they would fight on to victory. I get to see that every Tuesday night at 6.30. On a weekly basis at Celebrate Recovery, I am so privileged to be able to work with those people that are just like David, that they have cried out. They have called out to God for their deliverance from their enemies. They've admitted they're powerless, and they've asked God to fight off what's ensnaring them, what's entangling them. They've joined a community of people who share one common goal, and that's to be overcomers in Christ Jesus. They have circled their proverbial wagons and created a place of restoration, healing, and compassion. And restoration for anyone and everyone who is struggling in any way. Have you called out to God to contend with your enemy? Have you asked Him to rise up, to bring His spear and javelin, to come to your aid and be your salvation? You know, in John 4.4 4 it says, Greater is He who is in me than he who is in the world. But I'm asking you, do you believe that? Can you stand behind that statement? Once we've called out to God and we've asked for that help, then what do we do? We need to surrender it to Him, right? Give it to God and let God work. And allow God to say to us, I am your salvation. We've already admitted we're powerless. So wouldn't it make perfect sense to move aside and let the one who has the true power get it done. Surrender it to Him and allow God to lead us through that battle. Then we come out on the other side victorious. Now that doesn't mean, when I say move out of the way, that we don't have to fight. Sometimes, we're going to be in the fight of our life. Sometimes, it's going to get ugly. We're going to get a little battered, beaten up, maybe a little bloody. But when we do, we've got a place to turn. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. With that strength, we can persevere. See, David knew this. He harnessed that power all the time. So why don't we? It's because we're proud, maybe? Fear? Or maybe we're too ashamed. There isn't anyone here that doesn't have something in your past, your present, that you don't need to surrender. To cry out from the pit that you're trapped in and ask God to help you contend with. And if you're sitting out there and you're thinking, yeah, but you don't know me, Ron, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I've done. If you think what you've done is too outrageous, then look up Romans 8.1. Because Romans 8.1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
If Jesus Christ doesn't condemn, if He doesn't judge us, then why would we judge or condemn others or ourselves? You know, what we need to do is put on our armor. Then get with our brother and sister in Christ and say to them, you know what? We've got your back. I will stand and fight right next to you in this community. With our wagons circled where you're safe. Our third point this morning is there is strength in community. And we know that because, again, where two or three or more are gathered in His name, He will be there. When we faithfully cry out to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills us and God's character becomes a part of us. And then we are more in tune with the divine power of God the faster we can, one, cry out for His help, to stand and fight. But then the, the greatest part, is like David, we can de declare His righteousness and praise all day long. If we look at verse 9 and 10, after David has been rescued, he says, Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in His salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, O Lord? You rescue the poor from those hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Too strong for them. The poor and the needy from those things who rob them. Now notice there's no doubt in David's statement. What he's saying, he absolutely, wholly, and utterly believes that once he has asked God for help, God delivers it completely. By exclaiming, who is like you, O Lord, David is letting God know that he is fully reliant upon God's strength and His grace to pull him out of whatever circumstances he's in. When we completely submit to God, He is willing to contend with, ever, with whatever we need Him to contend with. All we have to be willing to do is surrender to Him and let Him know that no matter what happens, we're not afraid. We're not going to be afraid to fight no matter how many times we find ourselves in that same situation. If we surrender to God, He will always contend for us. So today I'm going to ask you to not be afraid and declare, I will fight. Let's watch this video. The Christian life is not a playground. It's a battleground. So today, I will give no place to fear or failure. I will not accept a trace of apathy in my attitude or actions. I will reject complacency and embrace the greatness that God has planted inside of me. I will waste no opportunity to glorify God and maximize everything He has entrusted to me. I will fight. My battle is not against flesh and blood, but against a spiritual enemy who opposes me. So I will draw the battle lines and face my enemy with a bold determination. My enemy fights against me because he fears me. Every time I resist him, he must flee. And every time he reminds me of my past, I will remind him of his future. I will make no excuses, but through every obstacle I will find a way. I will not procrastinate my progress. I will not defer my destiny. I will not waver when I'm weak. I will not cower when my circumstances take a turn for the worse. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will fight. Even if I lose the battle, I will win the war because I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I will reject the lies that echo in my mind, telling me that I don't have what it takes, that my best is behind me, or that humiliation awaits me. The devil is a liar, and my God always causes me to try up. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord, I will fight. I'm unashamed to represent a kingdom that is unshakable. No one will be able to stand against God's plan for me all the days of my life. 
With my God, I will advance against every troop. With his help, I will scale every wall. Though my enemies surround me, my God surrounds my enemies. Though they may come at me one way, they will flee seven ways. Because no weapon formed against me will prosper. And every evil thing that rises against me, I will condemn, I will fight. My heart is steadfast. My purpose is immovable. I am always abounding in the work of the Lord. And my potential is unlimited because the limitless God lives within me. I will fight. The cross is before me. The world is behind me. I'll never turn back. I'll never give up. I'll never settle. I'll never stop short. I will press toward the mark for the prize that is already mine. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate me from my God. And if my God is for me, who can be against me? I will fight. So I have a question for you. Are you ready? Are you ready to seize this moment? I want you to think about something. When Christ died for us, He died between two criminals. You have one on the left and one on the right. Just a breath away. They were the two closest people to Jesus when He died for our sins. Now one of those seized that moment. And He changed His destiny forever. But the other one, He didn't. He did not seize that moment. He sealed his faith forever. They both had the same opportunity at the same time. So I'm asking you, are you going to seize this moment? Are you going to ask God to contend for you? Are you going to ask for him to fight your enemy and change your destiny forever? Let Jesus Christ free you from the pain of your hurts, your habits, and your hang-ups. Because if you are, There's a community right here that's ready and willing to stand beside you. Ready to fight for you. As the pastor over Celebrate Recovery, I guarantee you won't do it alone. So don't let this coming season be another season of regret. Let's band together as a community and let's come out the other side as victors. Let's seize this moment and let's fight. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we ask you this morning to contend with our enemies. God, fight against those things that fight against us. God, we don't want to be held down anymore. We want to walk in your righteousness, in your light. God, 
God, my prayer this morning is that you will move through those here within the sound of my voice and let them know that you are the true Redeemer. That with you, everything is possible. That they don't need to fear or be ashamed. Your sacrifice has saved them and made them whole. God, I pray those that are afraid that, that you will lead them and guide them to a community that will support them. If it's not here, Lord, let it be somewhere else. But lead them to a community built around the love of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer this morning. So in Jesus' mighty name, and all his people said,